Hello, our lovely students. Hello from Snow TV Distance Learning. I'm Khan, your English teacher, and we are going to learn Good Job Unit from Power Up 6, Unit 6. Let's get started. Uh, at the first page, you see there are nine different pictures, and uh, as you can understand, in this unit, we are learning about uh, professions the jobs, the occupations. So, uh, which jobs can you see in the pictures, it asks us. Or which job would you like to do the most? So, you have uh, 30 seconds to think about these pictures and make some guess. Okay, while you are taking your guesses, uh, we have a video, so let's watch it together. Enjoy! Welcome to Jenny's Video Diary. Welcome to today's video diary. This week, I got this free with one of my magazines. You only have to answer a few questions and it will tell you which job is best for you. I know what job I want the quiz to say for me. I've been thinking about what job I want a lot. I'd like to be a musician or a singer. I enjoy practicing so much and It'd be amazing to be paid to play one day. I'd dance myself and play all the instruments. My family would come with me and work for me. Dad would be the band chef, of course, and Mum would be with me, on stage, playing the piano. And Jim? Well, maybe he could carry our bags for us. I heard that. Heard? What, Jim? Jenny's video diary. Job quiz. Okay, Jim. It's time for the quiz. I've been looking forward to this. Great. I'm excited too. What job do you think you'll get? I hope it's something with food. Or something working with animals. Like a vet. Or a zookeeper? Well, let's get ready to find out your future. The first question is, would you like to work full-time or part-time? Um, full-time. Are you interested in food? Yes. Would you like to work inside or outside? Inside. Are you calm around animals? Yes. Is it more important for you to earn lots of money or do something you love? Earning money would be nice, but doing something I love is more important. Are you good at writing essays? Yes. And the last question. Would you like to write about food? Yes. Great. I found the best job for you. And... Wow. Well, I've got some good news for you. Great. For your job, you can work with food and with animals. And that's brilliant. What job's that then? Well, um, it's a cat food taster. <laughs> a cat food taster? Like someone who tries food? For cats? Yeah. No, no, it doesn't say that. Let me see. We hope you enjoyed the quiz. We think the best job for you would be a cat food taster. A cat food taster. <sighs> well, don't worry, Jim. It's just a quiz. I don't think you can really believe the answers. Yeah, but eating cat food, that sounds 
It sounds disgusting. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, okay. Your turn, Jenny. First question. Would you like to work full time or part time? Um, full time. And are you interested in food? No. Are you confident at school or nervous? Confident. Would you like to be the boss of lots of people? Yes, that'd be great. Do you like being outside? Yes, I love it. Would you like to be a hairdresser? No, I don't think so. They talk to people all day, don't they? I don't think I could talk that much. Would you like to travel a lot for your job? Um, musicians travel a lot, don't they? Yes. Are you happy being in front of lots of people? Yes. Do you like to exercise a lot? I need to exercise a lot to be a dancer. Yes. Well, here it is, Jenny. The quiz has found the best job for you. Amazing. That's great. Will I be a musician? Well, Jenny, yes, you... Awesome! That's brilliant. I knew it. No, Jenny, wait. I mean, you might be a musician, but that's not what the quiz says. What? It doesn't? No. Don't be too disappointed. The quiz says that the best job for you would be a sailor. A sailor? Like on a boat? Yeah, <laughs> a sailor. This quiz is stupid. Yeah, it must be the worst quiz ever. I hated doing it. It gives funny answers, but those can't be the jobs we're going to have. Right, if we work hard, we can have whatever jobs we want. Yeah, I can be a vet, not eat cat food for my whole life. And I can be a musician, if I practice hard. Yeah, I think it may be time for the quiz to be recycled. Yeah, I think so. Goodbye, you. And goodbye to you all, too. Thanks, Thanks for watching. Thank you, too, Jim and Jenny. So, what was the uh, job for Jim and what was the job for Jenny that the quiz recommended? Okay. Uh, there is a quiz, too, for us. If you want to do it, you can pause the video and do the quiz for yourself. Let's continue. Take the test. Do you agree with the job that it chooses for you? Well done. Activity 2. Match the definitions to the jobs from Activity 1. Someone whose job is to design buildings. What is it? Yes, architect. The second one. Someone whose job is to cut hair. What is it? Yes, hairdresser. Someone whose job is to write computer programs. Which one? Yes, you're right. Programmer. The fourth one. Someone who works in a library. Which one is it? Yes, librarian. That was an easy one. The fifth one. Someone who cleans houses or offices. Which one is it? Cleaner. Okay, someone who works in science. Which one is it? Yes, 
That's an easy one too. Scientist. You're right. Someone who plays music. Which one is it? Yes, musician. And someone who delivers letters. Postman. Someone who works in politics. That's an easy one too. Politician. Someone who sails boats or ships. Sailor. And the last one. That's the easiest one, I guess. Someone who prepares books, newspapers, or magazines. And that's publisher. Let's check our answers. And well done. You've done it all correct. Let's continue. Language presentation one. Can you guess what the objects are and which jobs used to use them? As you can see, these objects are from the past. So, make your guess. You have 30 seconds. And for this 30 seconds, you can pause the video and think. Okay. Listen to the radio show. Check your answers to activity one. Let's start. Two. Listen to the radio show. Check your answers to activity one. Welcome to the What Is It quiz. The quiz where children have to decide what an old-fashioned object from the past was and who used it. Let's welcome today's guests. Hi. I'm Marcus. And I'm Su Jin. OK, so here's the first object. Marcus, you're first. Well, um, that looks like it's part of a car. Or maybe it's part of a plane. What's your guess? I think it's part of a car. I think taxi drivers might use it. Su Jin, your turn. Well, I think I know what it is. I think it might be an old hairdryer. That's what it looks like. So, I think it was used by hairdressers. Am I right? Yes, that's right. Well done, Su Jin. Ten points. This is a hairdryer made from plastic around the 1970s. Let's take a look at our next object. Su Jin. Ooh, that's a strange looking thing. I think it was used to make sweets. No, it can't be a sweet maker. It's too small. I've changed my mind. It must be for checking your eyes. And what do you think, Marcus? Oh, wow. I think it could be something that scientists use. Maybe for mixing different things together. Well, those were both great guesses, but sorry, neither of you get the points. This is a record player. It's from the 1950s. It was used by DJs and musicians to play music. Let's take a look at our next object. Sujin. Oh, I've no idea. Perhaps cleaners may use this? Maybe they'd clean dishes with it. That can't be right, though. I don't know at all. I know this one. I think it must be an old mobile phone. It looks like one I saw at a museum. Businessmen and politicians used them. In the 1980s, didn't they? Well done, Marcus. That's right. Ten points. So, after three objects, Marcus has ten points and Su Jin has ten points too. <laughs> so, we need to look at one more item to decide today's winner. Here it is. Marcus, you're first. 
OK, I think I know this. I think it's something that's used by architects. They might use it to see how tall buildings are. That's my guess. Sujin? I think scientists might use this to look at really small things. So, it's a... what's it called? A microscope. Sujin, that's right. It's a microscope from the 1880s. Ten points for Sujin and congratulations. You're the winner. Here's your prize. How do you feel? Brilliant. Just brilliant. Thank you. And thank you, Marcus. I hope you enjoyed the game. Yes, it was great. See you next time, everyone. Okay, so we'll listen to the radio show. It asks us to listen it again, but we did it right now. So, complete the notes about each object. The first one was a hairdresser's. Hairdresser's hair dryer. And it was used in 1970s. The second one is a record player. And it was used in 1950s. The third one was an old mobile phone and it was used in 1980s. The last one is a microscope and it was used in 1880s. Okay, you were right. Let's go on. Language practice one. Models of probability and deduction. We have five different sentences here. Let's read. It must be an old mobile phone. It looks like one I saw at the museum. I think it might be an old hair dryer. It could be something that scientists use. Perhaps cleaners may use this can't be a sweet maker it's too small as you can see there are some models here must may might could and can't we use must when we think something is true we usually have a good reason to think this for example if you see a man sneezing we can say he must have a flu because we have a reason to think about it. We use may, might or could when we think something is possible but we aren't sure it may be the other way too. And we use can't when we are sure something isn't true. It's the quite opposite of must. If we have a good reason to believe something is true, we use must. But if we have a good reason to believe it's not true, or we are sure about it, we use can't. So, let's do this activity. Choose one of the pictures below. As you can see, there are two different pictures. And complete the sentences for your picture. It will be your doing. You will complete the blanks. Choose one of the photographs above. Talk about it for one minute using your ideas from activity one to help you. Let's go on. Vocabulary two. Jim's big block. Let's see what Jim wrote this week. This week, Jenny and I have been finding out about jobs in our town. It's been great. We started by asking our friends what jobs they would like. Then we found someone with each job and asked them what it's really like. Read on to find out what they said.
jobs what are they really like before we read the next uh, things let's see let's see the activity one look at the photos in the blog what do you think each person's job is there is a man here there's a lady and there's a worker looking person and there's a dinosaur so what are your guesses the activity 2 read Jim's blog check your answers to activity 1 let's read it I have been working full-time as the manager of this sweet shop for the last four years before I worked here I spent a month unemployed and looking for a job so I was delighted to start here at first I was excited about eating a lot of sweets but about six months ago I started a game with a colleague to see who can avoid eating sweets for the longest so I haven't eaten any sweets since then I love sweets so I love to work in a sweet shop says David age 9 I work as a computer programmer for a company that makes games for smartphones. I work in a team of four people and we program a part of the game. The salary is great so I can buy the latest gadgets. The name of the game that I've been working on for the last few months is a secret, but I can tell you that there will be a pirate boat racing in it. And Steve says, I'd love to be a programmer and make computer games. My job is to dress up in a dinosaur costume. I go to children's parties and sing, dance and play games. I only work part time, usually on a Saturday morning once a month, so I don't earn much money. That's okay though, cause I've been studying hard recently as it's my last year of university. In the future, I want to quit my job as a dinosaur and have a career as a scientist. And Chloe says, when I grow up, I want to be a dinosaur. Cute. I've been working as an architect for 35 years and I've been the boss of the company for 5 years too. I've designed a water park and a playground during my career. I'm going to retire next year and move to the seaside. I'm excited about it, but I'm going to miss my colleagues. There are only five staff at my company, so we're like a family. And Diego says, I'd like to design an underwater hotel. Well, good for you, Diego. Let's complete the sentences. Use the words in bold from the blog. Let's do it together. Someone who doesn't have a job is... Yes unemployed second one to get money for doing work is to earn money someone who works for all of the week is working full time someone who works for only part of the week is working yes part time Someone who tells you what to do at work is your boss. Someone who you work with is your colleague. The money that you get from your job is your, what is it? Yes, salary. A job that you do for a long period of your life is your career when you leave your job and stop working because you're old you do what retire when you stop doing your job you say you have quit it the people who work for a company are the staff let's check our answers well done you did it great 
language practice two. Present perfect continues. We have two different sentences here. I've been working full time at the sweet shop for the last four years. I've been studying hard recently as it's my last year of university. The important thing here is the time that has passed since you started doing something. We use the present perfect continuous tense to talk about something that started in the past and is still continuing now. We use it to emphasize how long as the time is important for us, something has been happening. Read the block again and the questions below. For each question, circle the correct answer. The first one. The sweet shop manager feels positive about this job because Yes, he didn't have a job when he started there. That's why he feels positive about his job. The second one. The computer programmer says the game she's working on isn't known about by many people because it's a secret. How does the man feel about his job as a dinosaur? He doesn't mind doing it more often because he is doing it part time. What does the architect say about her job? She has close friends with the people she works with. Let's check our answers. Well done. You've done it great again. Let's keep on going. Pronunciation. Listen and repeat. Let's listen it closely and repeat. Let's go. Five. Listen and repeat. I've been working here for the last four years. She's been working here for three months. He hasn't been working here for a long time. We've been living here since January. Have you been working here long? Okay, let's listen to it again and do the pronunciation correctly. Five. Listen and repeat. I've been working here for the last four years. She's been working here for three months. He hasn't been working here for a long time. We've been living here since January. Have you been working here long? Okay, if you want to listen to it again, please rewind the video and listen to it and repeat it again. The sixth activity. In pairs, ask and answer questions about this picture. Use the present perfect continuous. What is this man being doing? He's been cleaning the pet shop. Your mission. Mission stage two. Interview your partner about their job. What do you do? I'm a scientist. I do research on a boat. You can make it as a role play. Let's keep going. Literature. Look at the pictures. What would Mike like to do when he grows up? Let's listen to it. The Daydreamer. Mike was 12 years old. Both his parents worked. His father was an architect, and his mother was a librarian. 
This meant that they were out most of the day. When Mike came home from school, there was never anybody at home. He used to leave his things by the front door and get the sandwich his mother always left for him in the kitchen. Then he used to go to his bedroom, turn on his computer and start his homework. This week, he was working on a project about famous people in technology. Mike liked working on the computer, but today he was tired. He started to daydream. I might be a programmer when I grow up. I could make a lot of money. I'd have my own helicopter to pick me up. Wouldn't that be funny? The front door banged. It was Mike's mother. Hi, Mum, he said. What have you been doing since you got back from school? She asked him. I've been finding out about famous people in technology. Did you know Mark Zuckerberg was only 12 when he became a computer programmer? I'm 12. I wish I could work and earn some money. Mum laughed. If you work hard at school, you might be an architect like your dad one day. Mike went back to his homework. But instead of working, he started daydreaming again. I might be an architect in the future. I could design a lot of things. I might build flats and be a star in architecture or build strange palaces for kings. The front door banged again. It must be his dad back from work. Good. Time for supper. Mike switched off the computer and went to join his parents downstairs. Hello, his father said when Mike ran into the kitchen. What have you been doing today? Mike told him about the famous people in technology, such as Bill Gates, who earns $250 every second, and how he was now one of the most successful people in the world. I'd like to start working, he told his father. Try dog walking, his dad suggested. A lot of people don't have time to walk their dogs. His dad was only joking, but Mike started to daydream again. I might be a dog walker. I may do it after school. I could do that now. I might start a company. That'd be so cool, but I wonder how. How do I start a dog walking company? Mike asked. Easy, Dad said. You've been learning computer programming for the last two years. Design an app so that people in the neighborhood can contact you to walk their dogs. But remember, you can only do it part-time because of school. So Mike designed an app. He called his company Smart Dog Walking. A lot of people downloaded his app, and in no time at all, he had a lot of dogs to walk. Smart Dog Walking was a success. Mike was very busy, though. There was no more time for daydreaming. Okay. So we listened to the daydreamer. Let's talk about the questions. What jobs would Mike like to do and why? You have the answers. Okay. What are they? First one, a programmer. 
the second one an architect and the last one a dog walker and why if he becomes a programmer he can make lots of money if he becomes an architect he can design lots of things and if he becomes a dog walker he may even do it right now how does Mike earn money how does he work money it's because of the app what do you think is more important earning a lot of money or being happy in your job think about it let's go on cross curricular look at the pictures what do you think they are showing there is a man cutting off a tree there is a woman selling chairs and there are people at a cafe listen and read the text check your ideas in activity one let's listen to it two listen and read the text check your ideas in activity one economic sectors there are three main economic sectors they are called the primary, the secondary, and the tertiary sectors. These sectors make a chain of production which provide customers with goods and services. The primary sector. Workers in the primary sector get the materials we need to make things. These are called raw materials. People work in agriculture, fishing, mining, and forestry. Agriculture is important because farmers produce crops like wheat, fruit and vegetables. They also keep animals for meat and sheep for wool. The forestry industry cuts down trees for wood and mining means digging coal or other minerals out of the ground or oil from the sea. The secondary sector. People in the secondary sector Take the raw materials and change or make them into things that people can use. Most of these products are made in factories. For example, clothes are made from cotton or wool, furniture from wood, and cars from metal. Coal is used to supply us with the energy we need for our homes. The tertiary sector. The tertiary sector is a very large sector. It is also called the service sector because the people who work in this sector provide a service. For example, hairdressers and teachers work in the tertiary sector as they are providing a service. At a hospital, the doctors, nurses and scientists who are employed there provide a health service. Okay, read the text again and complete the summary. I think we don't need to read that text again. Let's fill in the blanks. People who work in the Let's read it again. primary sector get the materials to make things from people in the secondary sector turn raw materials into the things we need people in the 
tertiary sell us the things we need let's check the answers well done you have done well what jobs do these people do which sector do they work in I've been working in the library for two years someone says okay he or she is a librarian and he or she is in the tertiary sector the second one I've been milking my cows since five o'clock this morning milk is a raw material so it's in the primary sector and he or she is a farmer my dad plays the guitar he could be famous one day he's doing a service so it's the tertiary sector the last one I love the cake shops in the village mrs. Harris makes great bread and cakes so she takes the materials and makes cakes so it's secondary sector B1 preliminary for schools draw a line to match the free time activities to the possible future jobs let's do it together drawing pictures doing drama writing stories running doing puzzles and playing computer games these are the free time activities actor scientist journalist programmer fashion designer and footballer these are the possible future jobs okay now 30 minutes to match this free time activities to the possible future jobs Pause the video right now and do the activity. Okay, let's do it together. Drawing pictures. What could it be? Actor, scientist, journalist, programmer, fashion designer or footballer? Yes, fashion designer. Doing drama. I think you know what this is actor writing stories and this goes to journalists yes running I think football players do the running all the time doing puzzles and this is yes scientist and playing computer games what do you think yes programmer let's check our answers well done you have done well listen to the first part of a conversation who is Molly underline your answer let's read it but from here Welcome to the show, Molly. Thanks for coming to talk to us about your work. No problem. Now, I know you didn't always want to be a hairdresser. Tell us how it all started for you here in Wales. Well, my parents wanted me to get top marks at school, especially in science because my dad was the biology teacher I was always more interested in fashion and I used to draw lots of pictures of my favorite stars and their new looks. My mum said I should stop wasting my time. Okay, who is Molly? A teacher, a young employee, a part-time journalist. If you don't get it in the audio, you can listen to it again. Please rewind the video. Okay, she works in hairdressers, so she is a young employee. 
Let's check it. Yes. Correct. What other words might Molly use to talk about her job? Add three words to each column. This is your homework. Add three words to each column. People, feelings, and verbs. Don't mix them. Read the questions and the conversation below. Which words in the conversation are similar to the underlined words? Then choose the correct answer. When she was a student, Molly preferred to Yes, think about celebrity styles. Let's check it. Well done. Good for you. Listen to the next part. For each question, circle the correct answer. Let's do it together. I used to draw lots of pictures of my favorite stars and their new looks. My mum said I should stop wasting my time. Right. So then you went to art school. What happened there? There were lots of talented kids there and I suddenly didn't feel very confident. I gave up after a year. So, I asked for some training at the local hairdressers instead. I started off just cleaning the floor, which wasn't very exciting. I nearly quit, and even my friend Gordon was earning more than me as a trainee computer programmer. I was really jealous. But now you're working in one of the country's top hairdressers. Tell us about a typical day. Actually, I am so lucky because, although my salary still isn't great, I get to choose my days off. All the staff are really friendly and cheerful. We've now got a famous architect and a politician as regular customers. Okay, what does Molly say about her first job at the hairdressers? She says it wasn't exciting, so it was boring. What are her colleagues like? They are really cheerful, she says, so it's happy. Let's check our answers and well done, you've done a great job again. Let's go on. B1 preliminary for schools. It's going on. What would be the best job at a wildlife center for a day? Which animal would be the most interesting to work with? What would it be? For me, it was a tiger. Let's go on. Draw a line to match sentences from 1 to 7 to A from G. Can you write one more example to match A to G? Let's match them. Mike wanted to look after the baby giraffe. Wanted to look. There's a verb. And after that verb, there is an infinitive. So it is verb infinitive. The kids who were only 11 loved the frogs. Who defines the kids? And it's defining relative clause. 
Federica took her camera to the park. Her means that the camera belongs to Federica. So, it's possessive pronoun. I was good at cleaning the bird cages. Good at. Good is an adjective. And at is a preposition. So, adjective and a preposition. The elephant had a bandage on its leg. A and the. These are the articles. And this is an indefinite article. The bats were the ugliest animals. We shouldn't be saying that. But the ugliest is a superlative adjective. And the last one. We played with the monkeys for three hours. And this is a preposition. Let's check our answers. And well done. You've done it again. Good job. Read the text. Look at answers O to 3. Which structures from activity 2 are they? Wildlife Center in Peru. We have just come back from a holiday in Peru. It's an incredible place if you prefer to see wildlife and go sightseeing. I wanted to look after sick or injured animals in the rainforest for a day. My parents found a center that lets you do just that. During the day, I had to prepare the animals food, give them medicine and clean their cages. We also repaired some of the buildings, which were quite old. The oldest animal was a parrot. He was 50 years old and he had... Let's stop here. And the structures. The first one, there. Which one is it? Yes, it's a possessive pronoun, just like her. The second one, which? Which one is it? Yes, a defining relative clause, just like who? And the oldest, which one is it? Yes, a superlative adjective. Let's go on. Now look at the numbers 4 to 6. For each question, write the correct answer. Write one word for each gap. Let's do it together. He was 50 years old and he had a broken wing. Whereas the finest animals were certainly the monkeys. We worked for five hours and I felt really satisfied seeing the animals get healthy again. That was worth more than anything. I would recommend doing this if you are keen on animals or interested in nature. I will put a lovely photo of the parrot on my bedroom wall to remind me of my new friend. Okay, for and on, these two are prepositions, and this is an indefinite article. Let's check our answers, and well done. We have done a great thing. Let's keep on going. Review part. We are at the end. Circle the correct words to complete the sentences. You have, let's close it for a second, you have uh, 30 minutes to complete this activity and we are going to do it together.
So pause the video right now. Okay, let's do it. The hairdressers need to be careful all the time or they must or could. Yes, it's a possibility. So we use could. To cut someone's hair. He doesn't know how to play any instruments. So might or couldn't. Yes, it is can't. He doesn't know how to play any instrument, so he can't be a musician. It's impossible. I'm not sure what I want to do when I grow up, but I... Yes, might, because he's not sure. I saw him with some books, so he might be a librarian, or... He may be a publisher. She's carrying a vacuum cleaner and wearing yellow gloves. So, she must be a cleaner. We have a good reason. She says she spends a lot of time on stage. So, she could be a DJ or an actor. Okay. Let's check our answers, and well done, these are all true. The second well activity. Complete the sentences, use the words in brackets, and the present perfect continues. Let's do it together. Okay, now you have 30 seconds to fill in the blanks. So pause the video right now. I think you've done it. Let's start. We are going to use the verb work. I have been working part time as a cleaner since I started university. The second one, he has been dreaming of becoming a politician since he was young good for you i've been earning some extra pocket money by washing up for my neighbor the fourth one she's been playing the guitar for hours maybe she'll be a musician one day maybe I've been living here since last year it's, it has been a good year she She's been looking for her keys for ages. I hope she didn't leave them at the hairdressers. It would be terrible. Let's check our answers. And yes, we have done it. Good for you. Well done. So, the last activity for the unit. Choose 10 words from this unit. Record the words using the steps below. First, you are going to find the meaning of the words. You can do it either in this unit or in a dictionary. And after you find the meanings, record its meaning. You can do it by drawing the word or writing similar words. After that, you are going to use it by showing the meaning of the word to a partner and let's see, can they guess it or not? And your last mission, write a blog about your day. 
Okay, guys, thanks for listening. Our unit is over. See you next time. Bye.